Well, my name is Bob Caron from Los Angeles. And a few moments ago, you talked about soulfish. And I believe you studied with Renee Longy uh, yes, a long while back. And I studied with her also. She was one of the motivating forces that brought me to you. And I wonder if you could talk about soulfish a little bit and, and how it's used for brass instruments. Well, I think soulfish is one of the most important subjects that I know of. Many years ago, when I first joined the faculty of Northwestern University, about 25 years ago, I brought up the subject of the desirability of solfege in their teaching, and they looked at me like I'd told a dirty joke on Sunday in church, and uh, it was received terribly. I don't know why, to this day, I don't understand why they did not see any value in solfege, but solf solfeggio is the training of the mind so that when you see an ink spot on a page, it becomes a stimuli for what it represents as sound in the brain. If you look at words, words have meanings. If you look at the word stop, S-T-O-P, those are just ink spots. That has a meaning. Red, R-E-D, a color. All you see are those ink spots, it means something. You take a man in electronics and you're Give him a symbol in electronics, and he immediately is thinking of Ohm's law, uh, the resistance, or this or that, whatever in the discipline that it represents, ink spot means something. What does it mean to a musician? Now, if ink spots on a piano, unfortunately, could mean you touch this key. I want to touch an A. So you hit the A. You can play that A without hearing it. In other words, it'll give you the answer. You can do it as a question and it'll give you an answer. A brass instrument, the laws of acoustics are such that it should be a statement. Now you develop the ability to have a statement by the study of solfege. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do, so, mi, do, fa, la, do, fa, whatever it's going to be, but you have always the ability to see ink spots which convert into sound. They become stimulus for what they represent, just like the language aspect would. Uh, this is our language of sound. Now, if there is such a thing as a shortcut in music, in playing a brass instrument, I would say this would be it. There is no such thing. There are ways of maximal efficiency. But this is one of the ways to maximal efficiency is to have solfaggio. Herseth is a master of it. Dale Clevenger, our first horn, is marvelous in solfage. I had to have it required for three years at the Curtis Institute. I took it for six and a half years. Lange's, uh, when she was married, the, the married name was Mikhail, and married a noble player. And so I knew her as Madame Mikhail. But she was, I asked to be in her class, and it was one of the most valuable experiences. There are two experiences I remember at the Curtis Institute that were just magnificent for me. The six and a half years of Sofagio with Madame McHale, and three years of phrasing with Marcel Tabato, the first oboe player of the Philadelphia Orchestra. I was in this phrasing class, again by request, and I took it for as long as they would tolerate having me in there. And uh, being a tuba player, I, I, had to, I was very much interested in phrasing. And uh, so I was taught phrasing along with his oboe students and the others, and I felt it was of an enormous value to me. Solfege is something that I wished any trumpet player having difficult with accuracy or any tuba player with accuracy, I wish they would master solfege by taking 20 minutes a day and a pitch source and start learning, start from scratch with the worst voice in the world. If there's changes in range, drop octaves or whatever, get to where it suits you. But nevertheless, a consistent daily dose of solfege is just magnificent for any of us. I still do it to this day.